Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Quest for Creative. In the last episode, I went over the ground rules of this series, basically stating that uh, my goal is to get as close as possible to creative mode without actually going into creative mode. Uh, as I said yesterday, I was going to be dis finding a new place to live, and as you can see, I have found a new place to live. I kind of like it. Uh, basically, imagine this entire area being completely covered in random machines and parts used to do my goal, basically, uh, because this is an ability series. This is an abusive series, yes. Um, I also did a little mining yesterday. Nothing too terribly major. Uh, I also went and built a humble little home to live in. Um, I will show it off for you guys right now just because, hey, why the hell not? Like I said, this is an ability series. This is an abusive series. So I just kind of had some fun for a few, several hours building this thing. Say hello to Chrono Trig. This is actually my cameraman. I'm using the statues mod because I felt the need for somebody to be sitting, standing on the porch, waving at people as they cross by. Yeah, nobody's crossing by. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, keep up the good work, man. So I just had a little bit of fun. Enjoyed building. Clicky. And I kind of like the house. Uh, it's a little Spartan right now. I have no idea what to do with all this space. I built the house a little too big. But I'm working on it ever so slowly. Um, I got my nice little kitchen set up. I really, really like my kitchen. Uh place to eat dinner and if i remember correctly if you're hungry you can actually eat off these plates but i don't actually remember and i never remember to check uh we got a couch that you can't sit on yet uh, apparently they're implementing being able to sit on the couch so whatever uh, i got my fireplace here which to be perfectly honest i'm mildly surprised hasn't set anything on fire uh, while most of these are actually micro blocks and micro blocks don't catch on fire, some of these blocks, like, uh, that guy right there, it just a regular block. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like, these are regular blocks as well. I don't know why they haven't caught on fire. I'm gonna go with it. Kind of nice. Uh, behind here, I have every intention of putting in a basement and possibly a workshop underneath the house. I just haven't yet. Not terribly high priority because my workshop is going to be the entire valley. Yeah. And it's just where I keep my micro blocks. Nothing major. Upstairs, I have... This is a secondary room that I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. This is the tertiary room. This is a very tiny, tiny room for somebody to sleep in. Nothing major. We have the master bedroom, which is kind of tiny, but you know what? I don't care. It's functional. I actually had this originally designed where this, the, both of these rooms were just one room. But then I thought, no, you know what? I want a bathroom, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a bathroom. And then I thought, I have no idea how to do that, so it's going to be a tertiary room for now until I can figure out how to make a bathroom. And then in here is just the library. Yeah, my enchanting table, my full enchanting table. Whee! Which I've only ever used for a sword. For a sword and a pickaxe. My pickaxe turned out really good. The sword the sword kind of sucks. Fire aspect 2 for 30 levels. Bullshit. But anyway, so that's my house. That's a quick little tour. Any suggestions on what I could do with the house, I will be overjoyed with because I'm out of ideas. I'm completely out of ideas. But anyways, all right, so let's get to the point of this series. And the point of this series is not building. Today, uh, as you can tell, I'm starting to run a little low on food. I only have six cooked chicken left. And I could go out hunting for food. I mean, there's a whole giant herd of cows on the other side of that hill. Hell, one of them's right there. I could go hunting for food, but... That's not the point of this game. The point of this series is to make the game play itself. I'm too lazy to play the damn game. 
So that's one thing I'm going to be doing today is making an infinite food source, which if you guys had kept track of my previous series, specifically the community craft series, you already have an idea of what I'm going to do. But the second thing I'm going to do today is we're going to make our first infinite block. And uh, it's going to be really, really easy, which is why I'm perfectly fine doing both of these things today. Um, and now I'm stalling for time because I'm going to sleep through the night so I don't have to worry about mobs and crap. Um, but yeah, so we're going to make our first infinite block today. Our first step towards creative mode. Woohoo! And we're going to be making an infinite food source. Uh, but for right now, we're actually going to sleep. Oh. I like these Project Red backpacks, but uh, they're a little glitchy. They're hard to put stuff in and pull stuff out of every now and then. But uh, this is from Open Blocks. It is the sleeping bag, and I can do this. Good night. Yes, it is a actual sleeping bag. It does pretty much exactly what you expect. It lets you sleep anywhere. Probably with the same limitations as the regular bed. You can't have mobs nearby. Um, it has to be at night. It won't tell you it has to be at night, though. But uh, it does have to be at night. And as you notice, my chest piece came off. And that's because you'll be able to see it in a really fast flash. Bloop. It runs as a chest piece. Uh, which is actually kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so it'll take off your chest piece, but it will just pop it out of your inventory and you can grab it again, which is kind of cool. All right, so we are going to start and actually do something since I've spent the last, I don't know, what, five minutes of this episode, five, ten minutes of this episode not doing anything actually useful. So let's actually do something. And we are going to start with a uh, couple of thermal expansion things. Uh, what else do I need for this thing? I need an igneous extruder. I need glass and two tin, which I have already prepared. Somewhere around here. Tin. And let's build this thing. Um, let's see if I remember how to build it just by seeing it at a quick glance. Yes, I do. So I need our igneous extruder. I need... No, not in there. A uh, locker. And I'm going to do a double high locker just to make things easy. And I need two buckets. Where are my buckets? Ah, here we go. Two buckets. The first bucket, I need water. The second bucket is kind of obvious what I need. I need lava. Now let's see if I can remember where a lava source is. Um, that's actually a really good question. Where do I have a lava source? I think one's around here. You know, I did tell myself not 20 minutes ago that I should go and grab a bucket of water and a bucket of lava before I start this episode so I don't have to be hunting around. Ooh, there's another burning man. I don't have to be hunting around for lava in the video itself. I thought I had a nice close lava source. It's a volcano biome. Which, honestly, the uh, red power volcanoes look cooler. But these are far more functional. Um, and they still look pretty nasty. They probably look like what a real volcano looks like. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, this is all we need. We need a water bucket, a lava bucket, a locker... And an igneous extruder. That's all we need for our first infinite block. And uh, at this point, if you know what the igneous extruder does, you already know what I'm doing. Now, what I am going to do... Yeah, uh, we'll do it right here. Right there. Basically, what I'll do is I will set it up so that we have the line of lockers here. Uh, so basically I'll have uh, boop, boop, a line of lockers with all the infinite supplies in it that we make. So that means I'm going to have to go underneath the locker to put the igneous extruder in. 
Make sure it's in cobblestone mode. Basically what this thing does, the igneous extruder, we can make cobblestone, we can make smooth stone, or we can make obsidian, and it takes both water and lava to do it. And as you just saw, I right-clicked on the igneous extruder to put stuff in. Now, depending on its mode, depends on what it does. If it's in stone or obsidian mode, it will actually use up the lava and uh, water. Uh, but, oh, it's already set up. I don't have to do anything else. It's already done. As you can see, it's actually doing things, but nothing showing up in the output, and there's a reason for that. It's showing up in the large locker. The default settings is the output up and output down, which I'm actually going to turn off all inputs and all outputs. That way, this is the only thing it does. Now, if it's in cobblestone mode, it will never use any of the lava or any of the water. So we now successfully have an infinite source of cobblestone. And I'm just going to turn off redstone just in case we have to put something around it later on in, this, in, the, in the series. And that's it. We have our first infinite block, which is kind of awesome. And that's pretty much where you start when doing this kind of thing. You just start where it's easy. You know, you start by finding what you can make infinitely easily and then start combining things later on. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do... Woo, I guess I should label these things somehow, some way. Um, I need a sign. Let's put up a sign. One, two, three, four, five, six and a stick, and we'll make some signs. And I guess what I could do, just to make things interesting, we will label these things uh, what they are and what mod is needed to use them. Uh, where do I want to label this? Do I want to label this up top? We can label this up top. Uh, cobblestone? Uh, requires thermal expansion. I have no idea if I spelled that right, and you know what? I don't care right now. I will worry about spelling later. I'm just writing it down so I know these things. That's probably something I should make sure to do, is just write it down really quickly so I know what is what, so I don't lose it later on. All right, so next task, food. Food, 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 food. And I am going to be needing, no, not droppers. I'm going to need dispensers, redstone, comparators, uh, f no, not furni. Uh, what all do I need? What all do I need? I need smooth stone. I'm trying to keep track of what all I need in my head. It's not terribly easy. Uh, and I need lava. So I need my buckets again, and I need to make a quick run off, Woo. fly off, come on, there, no, up, there we go, thank you. Is that poisonous? I don't know what that is. I might have to look into that and see what that is. I wonder if I can use that for anything. And that's something you always have to keep in mind when doing this kind of thing. What can I abuse? Now, I do want to add another rule that I remembered that I was going to use, and that is that anything in-game is up for grabs. If it can be done in-game, I can use it for the series. So if I find some magical way to duplicate items, I can use the duplicated glitch. Now, I also want to add that that's not the point of this series to use duplication glitches. I mean, if that was it, I'd just have to find a duplication glitch and duplicate the hell out of things, and I'd be done. But that's not the point of the series. The point of the series is to do this stuff automatically so that I don't have to do it myself. Which, yes, right now sounds really, really lazy. But, I mean, that's the point of the series is to do it myself. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I need... 
That ought to do me. Ooh, I need hoppers as well, which I made a few to begin with. And I think that's all I need, but I guess we'll find out. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's been a little while since I made this. I'm going to make it here, right here. Um, ooh, I also want glass because I want to make this out of glass as well. Parts of it out of glass anyways. Uh, let's see, glass. Is that all I have for glass? That's all I have for glass. I'll have to cook some more. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is put down a dispenser. I'm only going to be using one, even though I had a whole bunch in my inventory. Because, you know, I only need one for this. And we'll put down a comparator. And let's see. I need smooth stone there. Redstone repeater here, a redstone repeater here, and I need redstone, which I don't have. You know, I was thinking, I need redstone as well. Uh, let's grab a couple of blocks of redstone. Well, oh, oh, hey. <clears throat> there we go. Plop. Don't think I need any more than four pieces of redstone, but just in case. All right, now you might be a little confused at what I just built here because I don't think I've ever built anything like this on uh, on 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 a video before. And I found this online. I forget exactly where I found this. Uh, let's go. Let's let's do a little bit of sleep. But basically, what I'm doing is taking advantage of the input of the redstone comparator. Uh, because the comparators have two inputs. They have uh, one that... Oh, right. Morph. Can't sleep and morph. But they have one input that determines how much stuff is in an inventory. So how much redstone signal to output. And then they have a secondary input on the side here. Which is a comparative input. Which is why it's called a comparator. Uh, it will compare the inventory... Uh, to the uh, input, you know, so it, it uh, okay, I really don't know fully how a comparator works, I just know that this works, and what it will do is, if there's inventory in the dispenser, this thing will light up, powering this stone here, powering the repeater, which will fire out full power redstone signal, and then it will light up all four of these uh, redstone lines, which will actually input a redstone signal into the comparator, which the comparator will look at, say, okay, this is way more powerful than what I'm getting in the dispenser, so I'm going to turn off the redstone signal, which will actually make a pulser. So if you get, like, two or three items in the dispenser, the comparator will pulse a signal, and then you'll ha it'll actually fire out all three things. Because if you just do it this way, which is how I had it set up before, uh, if you put two items in there, it will fire off a redstone signal, one redstone signal firing out one item, and the other item will stay in there, keeping the signal active, and it will never fire out the other item, and things will just flow in and it'll jam up the system. And basically, it just breaks the system, and we don't want to do that. So we'll turn that off, or we'll set that up so that it'll turn itself off automatically, and, like, for example, if I throw th three redstone in here, it fired off all three, which will be useful later on if we get, like, multiple things in it at once. Even though the way I've designed this idea, where I'm going to put a hopper directly on top of that, like that, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. I really don't. All right, so put down a couple of slabs in front of it. And you might be a little confused because the output of the dispenser is underneath the slabs now. Not a problem. Uh, I don't know if it's a glitch or what, but it's not a problem. And then we put up two high glass ceiling there. And then... Uh, okay, we'll use dirt because I don't want to waste my glass right now. And then we'll put a cover here. Woo! Woo!
I'm trying to figure out how to do this without actually losing the dirt in the hopper because I don't want it firing out, which would just be annoying and a pain in the butt. Bloop. Alrighty. And one more. Do a quick morph into my bat mode so I can fly. Wee. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, that should be enough. Oh, and I forgot something. Crap, I'm going to have to break glass. I didn't want to. I didn't want to waste glass, but I broke. I had to break the glass. All right, so then we put our lava bucket in there, and it flows out over the two. And then you could see the half high space there. The half high space there is just high enough that you can put a baby chicken in there. Yes. So, yes, I'm going to be abusing chicken f physics, which I need chickens. I'm going to use some eggs. So, I've got a couple of chickens in a safari net. That way, I know for sure that I have chickens. And we'll put the chicken in there, and we'll put another chicken in there. So now we have two chickens in there, and then I will use the eggs. Not going to get any chickens. Let's go see if I have any seeds. This is going to take a little while to get up to speed. Uh, seeds, 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 there we go. Because this works best if you have a whole bunch of chickens. Bloop. Come on, give me the other chicken. Give me the other chicken. You bastard. You won't give me the other chicken. Oh, you're going to be a pain in the butt, aren't you? Ah, crap. There we go. All right, now the two chickens will get together. They'll make a baby chicken. Now I have three chickens. Okay, so the general idea is that the chickens fire off the eggs. They get picked up by the hopper, goes into the dispenser here, gets fired out into here, and then if we're lucky, we'll have a baby chicken in here. Now, the baby chicken will be perfectly fine until it grows up. Once it grows up, it grows up. Its hitbox will be larger than half a block. It will hit the lava, and it will die. And then what we do... Bloop. 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 Let's get a couple more hoppers. Specifically, two more hoppers. And boop. Pop one hopper out, put that way. Pop one hopper out, put that way. And right now I won't do anything else. Uh, so uh, when the chicken dies, anything that it drops will be picked up in these two hoppers, which work through half a block, which is really cool. And then it will be outputted wherever we want it. Well, where we want it will actually be in another locker. Actually, two lockers, because it outputs the chicken and it outputs feathers. So we'll have two outputs here. And then technically how I'm going to have to output it, and I'll do this off camera because I've got to make them, is I'm going to set it up so that it will uh, take uh, item ducks. Uh, yeah, these guys. Not the impulse item ducks, just the item ducks. I'm just going to use the item ducks because they're relatively easy to make tin and lead. I've just got to cook up the lead and then make them. And then I can use pneumatic servos, boop, these guys, to control the output and the input. So what I'll do is I'll set up a chest underneath here that will catch everything. And then I will have uh, item ducks going to our lockers. And then I'll have one locker set up for the chicken and one locker set up for the feathers. And then we'll have infinite feathers and infinite chicken. And there we go. Hey, yo. Pff, that's three things in one episode that we're going to have infinite of uh, once this gets up to speed. And that's going to be part of the problem is it's going to take a little while for this stuff to get up to speed. Uh, this works significantly better when you have a bunch of chickens in it. And it's just going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, so hey, there we go. We have a couple of things. And uh, let's put this up. Um, this setup here, this design here, which I shall label. Uh, hmm. What do I call this? 
We need names for these things. And I am a terrible, terrible namer. Uh, so I'm going to ask you guys, what should I call this? And then we'll have you know other machines later on down the line that we need names for. Uh, I don't know what to call this. But uh, we will at least label what we can make out of this. Uh, chicken, which the big advantage of this thing is because we're using lava to kill the chickens. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna output cooked chicken. It won't output raw chicken. It'll output cooked chicken. So that's one less thing we have to do. We don't have to cook it, which is perfect because I'm lazy. And that's the point of this series is I'm too damn lazy to play the damn game. Chicken feathers. Again, I don't know if I'm spelling this right, and I don't particularly care. Vanilla. Whoa, cap. Vanilla. Yep. So we're outputting chicken. We're outputting feathers. And this is uh, vanilla. This is completely vanilla. This entire contraption right here is vanilla. Uh, with uh, effort, I could actually set it up so that it's vanilla the entire way to the locker. Uh, but... You know what? That's too much of a hassle. So I'm going to use uh, thermal expansion to get everything to the lockers. But you don't have to do that. I mean, you could just put another hopper here and a double chest here. And then just access the feathers and the cooked chicken, you know, from the chest. So, yeah. Um, this contraption can be made in vanilla Minecraft exactly as it is. I mean, I use nothing in here that's not vanilla, which is really cool. So we have that one done, and we have our second episode, our first buildy episode of Quest for Creative Complete. In the next episode, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing yet. It's actually a little bit of debate. Um, I could be using Tinker's Construct and make a uh, smithy because it was suggested by Space Gator that I should use... Uh, no, not a smithy, a smeltery. I'm mixing up my things here. Uh, uh, making a smeltery. And it's a really good idea because the smeltery can double your uh, 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 cooked stuff. And it works with everything. As far as I can tell, it works with all of the ores in, uh, the, in this mod pack. Uh, but... It's a debate because the smeltery is really, really slow. And um, I have a bit of ores. You know, I have a considerable amount of ores to cook up. So, oh, go away, go away. Thank you. I hit the wrong button. So I don't know if I really want to bother with the smeltery to double my ores. Because it's slow and I have a considerable amount of ore. That's the advantage of the Attack of the BT mod pack. It's for building. It's not for mining. Uh, so basically you go out mining for an hour. You have enough ore to last you several days. Which is really cool. Um, and I will <laughs> overemphasize this point by letting you see in this chest. <laughs> Look how much fracking redstone I have. It's ridiculous. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with all that redstone. Whatever the hell I want, I guess. I'm going to hide on my roof. I don't think things could spawn on my roof. I don't know. I haven't looked into it too hard. Uh, anyway, so... Um, yeah, so the debate right now is to either make a smeltery, which is actually incredibly useful for other things that I'm going to be doing in this series, or to make a smithy. Now, if you remember the smithy I made in vanilla... Uh, there are two tutorial videos for the smithy. There's the original smithy I made, and then there's the Mark II smithy. If I do the smithy, which is actually looking more and more likely, it's going to be the Mark III smithy. Yes, I've upgraded it even further. There is a Mark IV smithy, but I'm not going to make that just yet. I'm going to make the Mark III smithy because it's purely vanilla. You can make this entire contraption in vanilla Minecraft. Uh, the Mark IV Smithy is uh, much more awesome, but it also requires mods. So I'm going to start with the Mark III Smithy. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the end of this episode, and I ramble a lot, but that's what I do. And 
I'm going to say uh, give your comments and ideas and names. Throw them out in the comment section. I could really use them because I'm terrible at names. Uh, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.